Yesterday morning, I broke my all-time fasting record. I managed to fast for three and a half days straight with consuming only water and nothing else. Let me walk you step by step through how that was. So, as you may know from the previous video I uploaded, I recently participated in a long short tournament in Romania, in Bucharest, and uh, did pretty well. And there was plenty of, of course, great food after the fights and everything. But on the way back, I thought I should probably start fasting because uh, that uh, my back was really hurting after the tournament and I thought, hey, free PRP for my entire body, which is what fasting does. You know, after if you go over three days, you're supposed to start producing stem cells. Your body is supposed to start producing stem cells, which are undifferentiated cells, which go and become whatever your body needs them to become. So you could say that it's a free stem cell therapy, or actually it's not even free. It's even cheaper than free because you're also saving money from not eating food, which you would otherwise. So you are, in a sense, you are making money through it. Anyway, it's not the money is not the issue. It's the, the fact that uh, I had to do that. And I started it on the way back before we even reached Greece. As we were traveling through Bulgaria, uh, we stopped at a restaurant in Bulgaria to eat. And that was uh, Monday afternoon. And that was it. That was the last meal I ever had until uh, yesterday morning. And yesterday was Friday. So it was Monday afternoon to Friday morning. For, so, for the people who are wondering how I managed to do that, uh, I can tell you that it's definitely not easy. It's actually really, really difficult. And it's the reason why I hadn't succeeded in doing that before. But uh, yeah, I succeeded doing it now. And uh, my next uh, goal at some point will be the five day fasting, which is supposed to be the best thing you can do. But let me walk you through this step by step and how it went. So, of course, the evening of uh, Monday was not a big deal because I already ate that afternoon and I did make sure to eat uh, some kind of food which uh, also had, uh, you know, plenty of potassium. So I was okay with minerals and I was okay with uh, overall nutrients and I was generally fine. Next morning, of course, I started to feel a little bit hungry, but not really much. That was nothing much because many, many days, like most, most of the days of the week, I don't eat breakfast. So I'm not so used to eating uh, breakfast anyway. So that was not very, uh, difficult to handle at all. That was fine. As the day was progressing, though, I was getting hungrier. But uh, for whatever reason, I was feeling OK. I was not hungry in the sense that uh, I was uh, starving or that I really had to eat. I was just feeling some hunger in my stomach and that went went on uh, throughout the day all the all the way until the time I slept in the evening. Of course, uh, you know, towards the end of the day, especially I was starting to have some um, uh, some weakness, which was uh, mostly, I believe, well, it was, of course, carb withdrawal is a factor always when you're getting when you're getting into a fast like that, uh, your body has to start using fat as fuel because it doesn't get any carbohydrates so of course you do experience uh, the carb withdrawal to an extent but uh, most of what the weakness i was feeling and a, a little bit of the dizziness was uh, due to uh, i think uh, sodium potassium and magnesium not being supplied i drank some tap water and the tap water here is pretty terrible uh, so I was not really refreshed by that, but then I realized that when I drank water from Romania that we brought, which was a Carpathian water, which was like a mineral water, it had its own sodium and potassium. And yeah, when I drank that, I was really refreshed, which was very interesting because uh, that water only had uh, traces of sodium and potassium. And that probably means that uh, you know, there is a recommended daily dose of sodium and potassium, but that's when you are eating just a normal, well, I, should, I, I probably shouldn't say normal, but anyway, a common carbohydrate diet, 
because you lose a lot of those minerals so you need to take a lot more of them uh, but then when you eat anything you also use up those minerals or maybe a, a big part of them is also getting lost by the body when the body rejects you know what it rejects from the food I mean at the end of the digestive process but what I realized by drinking that water is that I was restored like my dizziness was going away very fast and my weakness was improving very fast when I was drinking a little bit of water I found that really interesting the other thing that happened close to the end of the first day of fasting is that my body started producing some kind of smell which is because it's rejecting toxins this happens every time you fast especially if you've been eating junk for some time before and uh, it's basically your body literally getting rid of toxins through the skin and you might think that something is wrong because you can smell it of course if you take a shower that's fine of course you you know clean all of it off your skin but you might think something is wrong because you can smell that but it's exactly the opposite it's that uh, those toxins were inside your body before and now they're getting out of the body and uh, yeah you can smell them because they're getting out of the body and just go shower and it's fine so that's how I finished uh, my first day of fasting mild weakness a little bit of dizziness drinking of course only water like I did the entire fast and not too much water either you don't want to do that either you just need to drink enough water and uh, in the case that you're not eating food the water you need is less than when you are uh, you know exerting yourself or doing difficult things or when you're eating food because food needs water to digest I mean for example you also see that in animals if you give uh, pigs for example their feed and you don't give them water they will they will eat almost none of the feed well if they have water they will consume all of it so yeah we do need water to properly process food anyway on to my second day of fasting the second day is the most brutal one of all of them it always was in every fasting I did and it's probably always gonna be by the way an important thing to note here is that this was a fasting that was starting from a carbohydrate diet not a high carb diet but I was eating carbs uh, during you know the event in Romania and stuff uh, I was not on keto at the time and what I have to say about that is that of course this experience will differ for different people for example if I was on keto if I was on ke in ketosis when I started this fasting it would be a lot easier because I would not have to deal with uh, carb withdrawal and and uh, my system switching from uh, carbs to ketones uh, in the middle of the fast of the fasting but in this case it had and when that happens you know that this second day is a nightmare because you are thinking about food all the time because your body is starving for energy at that time and it still hasn't switched to ketones so it makes you think of carbohydrate rich foods all the time your senses are getting so keen and so sharp especially the smell the smell is getting so sharp and you can smell things that are crazy you can somebody's eating bread like you, you for example let's say you never cared about bread you, it's not something that excites you it's not like something that's so special for you and you see somebody eating bread when you're in that second day and you can smell the saliva with the bread mixing in their mouth and it just pierces your brain I cannot describe it it's just the the cravings are so strong the second day so the second day of course is the the litmus test for who can do it or not if you can go through the second day the third day is easier but the second day was difficult very difficult uh, especially when you live in an environment with other people I mean if you can isolate yourself and if you live alone for example I think it's a lot easier a lot easier to achieve that because you don't have you know those temptations let's say around you but if you live with other people you are in that second day and you see them constantly eating things and you know drinking things like milk or whatever and uh, it just all becomes so big in your mind just because you're starving yeah while it's not really that big normally before 
now it becomes huge. But anyway, I persevered, went through that day, went to sleep. One thing I was trying to do is take naps sometimes, and uh, that was both because I was feeling weak and, uh, you know, a little dizzy, slightly dizzy, but also because uh, I wanted the hours to go by and uh, to complete the fasting. So, of course, I did uh, take my rest. I mean, I was coming from a pretty brutal tournament as well. Um, so I was uh, very exhausted by that, although very happy and very complete. You know, psychologically, I was very uh, satisfied. But uh, yeah, it was uh, draining for the body and uh, I needed rest. So there was also that. So another thing that happens when you're fasting and it starts from 16 hours or so is autophagy. That's the main thing that happens. The stem cells are supposed to start being generated at about three days in. But from the first day, just 16 hours since you start fasting, you start doing that thing called autophagy, which is that your body recycles damaged cells, damaged proteins, any kind of rubbish that is in your body is getting recycled. It's not thrown away, just thrown away, it's getting recycled. And uh, that also uh, is the case for, you know, um, cancer cells, things like that. It's also one of the reasons why in uh, places where they fast for religious reasons or whatnot, they have significantly lower cancer, you know, uh, percentages. And so even though I was feeling some weakness and some dizziness and I was really, really hungry that second day, I was feeling my body getting repaired. I was feeling my body, I had lost all inflammation. Even my, my back was not hurting. If you can believe it, it's crazy. It's a great experience for me. And uh, I could feel my body getting, you know, renewed, uh, fixing, or like getting rid of all the junk in it and overall getting renewed. So the third day comes, third day of fasting. After that brutal second day, the third day was a lot easier. The body had calmed down, the cravings had almost disappeared, which means that I switched to ketones. My body was now working on ketones. And by the way, all these days I was making sure not to exert myself. I was not doing any hard work, just small stuff. And I was sometimes getting a little dizzy and I wasn't so strong, which was a bit of a, an interesting contradiction because like three days ago or two days ago, I was uh, fighting with a longsword all day, very dynamically against uh, very strong and young people. And uh, so I was doing the same myself. And then a few days later, I'm very weak and uh, <laughs> feeble. But that's part of fasting. I mean, if I was used to fasting, I wouldn't be like that. And people who are used to it, like the more you do it, the more your body gets used to it. And the people who were in that state as a natural human state, because that's how we evolved to be. We, were not, we did not evolve to eat every day. And uh, yeah, the people who were like that, they, it was not a big deal for them. Their body just kept functioning like nothing was happening in 100%. But yes, that third day was easier than the second one. Uh, and uh, there was a calmness in it. I was feeling calm, still a bit weak, and still a little bit of, you know, cravings and thinking about foods now and then, but nothing like the second day, completely nothing. It was easy to do, to go through the third day. In fact, when the evening of the third day came, I was, when I was completely three days in fasting, uh, two things happened, which are pretty important. One of them is that I really felt, the way I was so calm then and that uh, the cravings had gone, I really felt like I could go like this even further. I thought that I could extend the fasting if I wanted. I just didn't want to do it because, you know, I have things to do and I cannot be suboptimal. And it already was my goal to go three days and I went three and a half days in the end and uh, broke my personal record. So that was good for now and next time I might try to do it for more. But yeah, the other important thing that happened, which is the main thing, it's the goal of this whole fast, is that I really felt the generation of stem cells that you're supposed to get in the third day. I don't know if it's my imagination or anything, which I don't think it is because, I mean, it's effects on your body and it, my body is working so much better now after that. But I could really feel like my, my back was getting improved. 
together with my entire body, to be honest. So now, for example, it's been uh, about 20, no, a bit more than 24 hours since I stopped the fast when I finished it. And my back doesn't hurt. And I've got a serious back problem. So I don't know what happened, but I don't hurt. My back doesn't hurt. Any inflammation that the, there was there is gone. And not only that, it just works better. Of course, I'm not saying, I'm not claiming that I just fixed my problems now, just with this. But uh, I do feel a significant difference. It's, I mean, the problem is still there, I can feel it, but it's not hurting anymore. Like, especially since uh, it used to hurt all the time before. With, with very small gaps, that periods of time of the day that it was not hurting just because I was resting or whatever. So, I mean, nobody can tell me that, that that doesn't work because I am very improved just by doing it once. And that's how the final day finished. And uh, to be honest, in the end of the third day, I because, you know, I did it for three and a half days. But that means come Thursday afternoon, it was already three days, three full days, 72 hours. But then I slept later and then I slept for eight hours. So maybe four hours later, so another 12 hours. I would say I just fasted for a total of about uh, 84 hours, maybe, something like that. And uh, yeah, but in the evening, before I would finish my fast, when I was going to sleep, I was thinking that, okay, tomorrow I'm eating. And my wife actually cooperated. She was like, okay, I will get up at six o'clock in the morning and prepare. She was gonna prepare me um, a salad with cabbage and, uh, carrot, which I like, you know, cabbage, carrot, vinegar, olive oil and salt. And that's one of my favorite salads. And uh, also some burgers without the bun, obviously, because I got into keto right after I finished the fast and I'm still I'm still in keto now. So even though I was thinking about food the previous evening, when I woke up in the morning, I really did not feel any urge to eat. But I did it because, you know, that was the end of my fast and I had to eventually eat and, you know, start being normal again, kind of. And the experience with eating is that uh, your stomach has shrunk, so you cannot eat so much. I still ate a couple of, uh, couple of burgers and uh, like half my salad. And that was still too much for, for just the beginning of eating again. For many hours afterwards, uh, I was feeling my stomach being uh, completely... Uh, full and a little bit bloated and uh, at some point I was uh, having difficulty breathing and I think that is because my food, the burgers especially, they had a lot of salt but I didn't get uh, too much potassium to balance it out so suddenly my body got a lot of sodium but not enough potassium sodium potassium pump was messed up and that's the result I believe I could have uh, not had that problem if I had taken taken a potassium supplement and a magnesium supplement because you always need to get those two together uh, so that they work as they are supposed to or if I had eaten a, a green salad instead like a broccoli salad or even lettuce although the lettuce is on the poor the more poor side nutrient wise uh, but yeah kale broccoli those are great and then uh, of course uh, I ate the rest of my meal later in the day when I was feeling like I could eat again. And then I kept eating, you know, salads and uh, meat, eggs, stuff like that. Some sheep yogurt. And now, which is the next day from when I started uh, eating again, it's, uh, I think it's, it must be something more than 24 hours, might, might be like 28 hours after I started eating. I'm feeling so great. I'm not 100% with my energy because, you know, I'm on keto now, so my body is still adapting to, to ketosis. But uh, apart from that, which is like small, I can still do things. I can work. I can... My brain works fine, I think. And my body feels so much lighter and so much more renewed. It feels great. So anyway, that was my experience with fasting and breaking my record. My new record now is three and a half full days and I would really like to hear about your experiences with fasting and maybe some of you did it, maybe some of you are thinking about it, what are your concerns, what do you worry about if you want to do it and so on. Like I said in the beginning of this video, it wasn't easy this time, 
and it was even harder the previous times so I tried to fast, which is why I never reached three and a half days ever. But this shows that uh, I can do it because I did it. So until the next time, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Be well and take care.